welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. um. Hey YouTube fam, ça passe! It's your girl Nadesh, thank you for coming back on my channel. Today I kind of wanted to talk about night shift, uh, graveyard shift, shift work. And um, I'm speaking kind of from a nursing um, aspect or perspective, but it can work for anybody else who was working night shift. So I've been a nurse for four years now and I've been working night shift for the whole four years. It's insane, I know. But I got a love and hate for night shift. So I just, and I've been doing it and I've been surviving for the most part. So I just wanted to share some tips and tricks on how to survive night shift. Um, firstly, I just wanted to talk about night shift um, as a nurse most likely as a new grad or like your first year or six months at a hospital most likely they throw you or they put you on the working night shift in the beginning um i do want to let you know it is a tough thing to do but it is doable and uh, you just have to adapt and be flexible and just be ready to take on that challenge but there are many people who are parents going to school. Um, I don't have any children right now, but I know in the future I'm in, I may. So just adapting and learning how to get through night shift can help you a long way. I wanted to share with you guys my ways of how I've been surviving night shift. And let me tell you, it is a struggle, but you can get through it. First, on your uh, to get list, you need to get you some eye masks. Uh, this is amazing. Once you put it on, you are in the dark and uh, can't no light interrupt you. Um, I got these from Amazon, they're very cheap. I think I got like three for like $12 on Amazon. And then you need you uh, some earplugs. Specifically these that I have are foam earplugs. There are many kinds out there, but I have grown to like, this is what I started with, so this is what I know. And I, I just, I'm comfortable with it and because this is, you know, this is what I'm used to. But I like them because they're foam-like and then when you put it in your ear, they kind of like, um, like expand and it close the seal of your earlobe. So sound, you know, you really can't, it's like a muffled sound, so you really can't hear what's going on. I don't want to be able to not hear because sometimes I'm sleeping home alone. So I kind of want to hear like something in the background every now and then, um, you know, just for safety. But it does block out noise very, very well, in my opinion. And if you can, I would recommend getting like the night, night light, like the dark shade curtains or something like that. I personally have blinds in my home, so I, I don't use the dark curtains, but I do close my blinds and like, you know, flip them so that they're in the darkest, um, like direction. But because I have this eye mask and it's when it's on correctly, it is completely pitch black. And that's what you need to be able to sleep during the day. You need to like set the atmosphere, make it dark, make it dark, you know, make it quiet. That's why you have your earplugs. And um, and just kind of maybe if you're somebody who needs to like put a white sound noise um, in the background to help it be more relaxing, maybe you can do something like that. For me personally, I don't need a white noise. All I need is the room to be dark. I need to be laying, resting comfortably in the bed in a few minutes and I'm gone. Um, as long as I my ears like I can't really hear as much and also as long as it's really dark So honestly, it's crazy because you're sleeping during the day, but life still goes on and uh, Mornings, this is when everybody wants to mow their grass and they want to um, do some type of yard work field work and uh, Unfortunately, they don't know that we're trying to sleep while they're awake. So I mean we can't stop that so getting the earplugs are a must. You need to get you some good uh, muffling, noise canceling earplugs because every now and then you're gonna hear somebody more in their lawn and they're gonna be like, what, why, <laughs> can you please stop? But we can't control that. So you just kind of control your environment so that you will be able to be more comfortable. So along with getting your environment, your atmosphere well, you know, with your white noise, your night, your, you know, your night light, not your night light, but like getting it to the darkest atmosphere as possible. Some people, um, you know, they take melatonin or they take like a Benadryl. I personally, I don't need that. But I've heard, um, you know, so it, that works well for most people. But for me, honestly, 
once i'm in bed i'm like so tired and once i'm like I, I, I like to make my house cool too so you just get all snuggled up in the covers and then i'm out like a light knocked out it's amazing i love my sleep my sleep cycle is amazing when i get it right so you can probably do that if that works for you but i can guarantee you if you make it dark enough and you uh cancel the noise as well enough you will be able to sleep along with that limit your distractions like uh, many times like before we go to sleep you like to scroll you know and sometimes you scroll and scroll and scrolling and you get lost in the social world and you're like like you went you got home at eight o'clock and it's like nine o'clock and you still haven't gotten sleep so i would definitely say whatever you have to do do it as like you know in the five ten minutes of like when you're getting home you um take your shower brush your teeth just do your scrolling at that moment so when you're finally in, in your bed that you let go of the phone let go of any distractions put your phone on vibration or if you can get away with the airplane mode i personally um i keep my phone on vibration because you never know when it's an emergency so even though it distracts me many people know i work night shift anyway so they're not calling me so if night airplane mode works for you you can go ahead and do that so you don't get interruptions and then also go ahead and put your phone on vibrate whichever works better for you but i would recommend one or the other and then right when you get home um, or even like three to four hours before you get home, try to limit how much you're drinking because you don't want to be waking up during your sleep and having to go pee because you drunk like a gallon of water before you got to bed. Same thing that's that you would do at night before you go to bed, you know? I mean, at least I try to because I don't like getting up at night to go pee. It's annoying. But the thing is like when you're sleeping during the day, and then you're getting up to pee during like during the day and then if you get like any kind of sunlight your body naturally wants to react and then you're like awake so it's like it completely interrupts your sleep um and you're probably being up by one two o'clock in the afternoon which sucks because most likely you really want to push for five six o'clock to be getting up and getting ready for work depending on how far your job is I personally wake up at 5, 5.30. My job is 15 minutes away, so I could get away with it. So I would definitely recommend you get home early as much as possible. I know night shift and nursing period is hard to you know, have an exact time of getting home. But as soon as you get home, do your daily activities, you know, wash, brush your teeth, whatever you have to do as quick as possible so you can be in bed as soon as possible. You want to be able to at least like when you get to bed that you at least have a four hour um, amount of sleep time. I feel like after four hours, at least you feel um, a little rest. You, you won't feel completely rested if you're going back to work, but you'll, you know, you'll feel a little bit rested. But for me, I have to get five to six hours. So I'm in bed. I try to be in bed by like nine, 10 o'clock, nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, I probably get my eight hours. It's not really, not, okay, 10 o'clock, 10, 11 and then i'm up about five so it's like i get like six to eight hours I'm, i don't have any children i only have to come home and walk my dog so if you have a dog or your pets take care of them as early as possible or if you have somebody in the house with you you know always get help but get all that done as soon as possible so that you can be in bed a s a p and get your uh environment set up real well so you can get that good night's rest or a good afternoon's rest but it's gonna be really a good night's rest for us Everything is always backward. Going yes. on to the next subject is how living, um, working night stiff, it kinda, <laughs> it's a it's a win-lose, honestly. It sucks in a way because many times you're missing out on night activities. Like, you know, everybody going to the movies at night and then you're like, oh, I have to go to work. Or, you know, when they schedule things, um, most of the time it's hard to do because that first night when you come back from work, all you wanna do is sleep. like sleep so i mean it kind of sucks but i mean you just have to remind your friends and family that you do work night shift and when they're scheduling or maybe just kind of talk to you and let you know beforehand so you can kind of let them know okay i'm available i can come and you know you can make it work uh, definitely scheduling with night shift is a big deal you know honestly once on your last day um of your schedule you need two good days to be able to say that you recovered so um so on that last day of work you're gonna be sleeping the next day um you know probably all day and then wake up and then for you to fully feel like you have 
been you know recovered that next day um you want it to be like okay so let me just explain so recommendation for your schedule i would recommend you work three shifts straight or because three shifts can be hard straight i'm not gonna lie it's hard but um it works out better that way or if you can't handle three shifts um two and then space out two days in between and then two you know like like let's say i'll do sunday monday and then i'll be off tuesday wednesday thursday and then work um friday saturday so i'm still getting my three for that week but i'm spacing it out so an example of a schedule would be sunday monday work night and then be off anyway tuesday wednesday thursday then work friday saturday sorry not friday saturday excuse me you will work saturday sunday and then maybe like that next week like thursday friday so you can have that next weekend off so in that way you can have two days in between to recover um so honestly so that first night that you're getting ready for that night shift i i usually um so let's say this is my first night coming back the night before i try to stay up as late as possible so let's say it's monday night and then i work tuesday night that monday night um obviously i would have woken up at one eight, you know eight in the morning and live my regular life regular day but then that night i would push i would push 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 and try to sleep as late as possible um i used to in the beginning i don't know how i did it i used to just stay up that whole night and then go to bed about like 6 a.m that tuesday morning so it can kind of be like okay i just came from work but honestly your body when your body is telling you it can't it can't so what i've done and um, what's been working for me more more recently as i've been pushed i think the latest i've been sleeping at about 2 3 a.m and then i would go to sleep and i'll probably wake up a little bit like um eight in the morning and I'll do whatever, I'll eat a little something and then I'll go back to bed like how I would have if I came from home from work about like 10, 11. And then I get to sleep for the rest of the afternoon up until five. If I don't get any interruption, if I keep my, my setting well and if I didn't drink a whole gallon of water before I went to sleep, so then I can kind of get in that flow. But then that first night, so Tuesday night, you go to work, expect yourself to kind of be either super super tired because you're not used to being up that night or you might be super energetic on that first night i'm kind of energetic because i kind of i have lots of rest i'm ready to go and it's like okay okay yay yay but then that wednesday night when you go to work um it may be kind of like dragging it may be kind of hard that's when you're kind of feeling like and your body is like reacting like mm, something not right <laughs> why am i up when it's dark and you know it just your body just knows it's just weird and you feel super groggy and tired so then you know either that let me see what day are we on Monday? i think we're on wednesday night so either that thursday night you're gonna be off for two days or you go ahead and, and just push through to that third day and just work three days in a row that last night is gonna be tough but once you make it through this 12 hours you're gonna appreciate it because you're you know you're off for the rest of you know rest of the week until you get you know you go back to work and hopefully you have two to three days off um in between that three shift uh schedule so for sure i recommend work three days in a row or twos and then leave like two to three days two to three days in between for you to recover the reason why like i was saying before is because that night off you're gonna be so let's say it's wednesday night you're gonna be you're gonna sleep like no either like i recommend that first night off for you to sleep like four hours right you would sleep you know you get home like at eight nine whatever and you'll sleep up until like one in the afternoon get like four or five hours and wake up or like set your alarm or wake up you're gonna feel like crap in the beginning but it's better for you because then it allows you to kind of get back in that regular rhythm of going to bed at night like by when you wake up early and you break that sleep when it comes like you're gonna probably be in like literally when it's like that i'm in bed like eight nine o'clock and i'm so tired but then at least you get to sleep that night and i think we're on friday and at least that friday afternoon you can go back to that regular cycle of waking up in the morning and going back to sleep at night so really it's just like how i said you gotta adapt and like play with the times so that you know your body gets that rest and feels rested for the most part right so then eating eating is a big deal 
I don't know why, but you it's like a natural reaction to want to eat like sweets, cake, and all the fatty things at night. I don't know, because I guess like the carbs, it gives you energy for a while, but then you come crashing when you have a lot of carbs at night. And then you always want to eat like candy, like because you know we want that sugar rush. But um, let me warn you now, please be like careful and be very strict on yourself as much as possible because though that weight in honey it creeps in like nobody's business it's so annoying so i mean in the beginning like my first day of night shift i was eating whatever i was like okay i'm young you know whatever high metabolism and you know the little i'm i was still like slim but like not my comfortable weight so it caught up to me and i was like no so what i've been doing now is when you wake up at five o'clock that's our morning right so i mean for breakfast i don't really eat like a heavy breakfast you know normally so i would just have something light um it, no it normally won't be eggs and toast because it's like five o'clock in the afternoon it'll probably be like you know a sandwich or whatever really food i have but like a smaller portion so you know so i'm not like eating too much or i would either i would do a smaller portion before work and then have like a um a snack like 10 11 o'clock and then have like a medium-sized meal like i usually take lunch like between 12 to 3 in the morning and then i'll go home the next day and i'll have something very light, like an oatmeal or a toast and a banana and an apple and i go to bed i really do not eat heavy before i go to bed same as night you really they don't recommend eating late before bed so i don't do that or vice versa sometimes i wake up at five o'clock and i'm starving so i'll have like a big meal but then i'll kind of like you know like watch myself throughout the night be like mm -mm, let me eat smaller so then i could kind of like balance it but i still before i go to bed and i'm coming home i don't eat a lot i don't drink a lot when i'm coming home from work and i don't eat a big meal I'll just eat something to put on my stomach because if you don't then you'll wake up interrupt your sleep because you're starving and your stomach is like Ugh, i'm hungry so that's another thing um, to kind of help limit in, uh, interruptions of sleep is to put something in your stomach, but light, um, I would say, before going to sleep. Unfortunately, some people, I know some people who don't eat at night because they're like, it makes them nauseous, it's just weird, you know, I don't know. So if you're somebody that gets nauseous when you see you're eating at night or it's just not working for you, I would recommend having a heavier meal before you start shift. So at least that can hold you down and then have like little snacks, like, you know, healthy snacks, a banana, an apple, a bar, a protein bar. And I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna be getting little treats here and there, candy. Somebody on the floor is gonna have candy. So whatever, I, you know, I eat my little candy. I have, I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I eat cakes because they're always celebrating somebody's birthday. Night shift is always eating for some reason. It's so funny. Not because management got it for us, because we got it for ourselves most of the time that's another nice shift problem but you know we're always eating and you know so just be careful overall so that weight doesn't creep up um and then i think mostly is when you're coming home like really really like be strict on that right so then how do i stay up at night <laughs> crazy i don't know i guess because i sleep well you know during like the night before for the most part unless i get like a random interruption or something i sleep well during the day i don't really have much problems like feeling tired but it does come but so what i do i drink cold water like i mean to as cold as you can tolerate but i drink cold water and i'm like up because like i don't like cold water normally so that you know it just makes you uncomfortable and it wakes you up i kind of i'm not a coffee drinker but when somebody makes on the floor and you know it gets cold at night shift that's another thing Side note, make sure you have like two sets of jackets. If you're somebody like me, you know, you know, we're from Miami. For some reason, we're always cold. I know Northern people, they like 60 degree weather. That it ain't for me. So, you know, I have an extra set of jacket and I have like a long sleeve just to make sure I'm warm and cozy at night. During my night shift, because it's freezing at night. Freezing. So that's another thing. But going back to how you stay awake, um, definitely drink cold water. Um, if you're a coffee drinker, if that works for you, you know, like, you know, down in Miami, they have, you know, the little Cuban shots, Cuba, you know, what do they call it again? Um, the, it's the Cuban shots, uh, cafecito, all that kind of stuff. 
you know it's too strong for me so i just i'll drink like a little bit of coffee just because i want the warmth and the taste and i just like i had a lot of creamer which is probably not good anyways or like a hot tea i do do the candy sugar rush every now and then because you need like a little sugar rush um i would definitely recommend walking around the unit like when i'm feeling sleepy that's when i'm like walking around helping as much as possible you know nursing we gotta help each other out so whenever you're sleeping you're tired and you're okay to help walk around get the heart rate you know going and just obviously you'll wake up or like you <laughs> run up and down the stairs but just once you know you don't gotta do like a whole you know lap or anything like that but you know maybe up and down one or two flights and you'll definitely wake up for a while um so i would definitely recommend you do that walk around um maybe sometimes i do jumping jacks i go to the bathroom and i like do some jumping jacks and i'm like up for a while i like to stretch um stretching kind of makes me feel relaxed but i don't know it just it wakes me up i guess because it you know you're moving and doing activity i know sometimes just like do some stretching and some oxygen in and you're awake for a while at least for the most part and then i mean for them like i work in icu sometimes you're so busy you have no choice but to not be tired so when the tiredness does come you know try those things but if you are absolutely you know like exhausted and it's like you know like unsafe i would i don't know how it is on many units so sometimes you can ask like your nurse or your charge nurse um for some time for you to just shut your eye and take like a quick nap 15 minute 20 minute nap so maybe you're you know, 30 minutes i don't know everybody's hospital is different but you know some people will cover you and you take your 15 30 minute nap and you kind of recover and you're okay personally i don't like sleeping during work it ain't for me i feel horrible after that i don't like taking naps at work because i just feel more tired and it feels like it was it's a tease and i don't like a tease i either want to sleep good or you know not a lot i'll wait so i can get a good good night rest i was never like a napper like someone who takes naps in life so taking naps during work it didn't work out for me it doesn't work out for me but if you need it i would definitely you know say try it um but yeah so work on uh so just in summary work on making your atmosphere right um watch your food intake um you know do some cardio or something to keep you awake and then uh work on your schedule big 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 must i know in the beginning some places don't allow you to be more you know allow you to be flexible or like you to make your schedule in the beginning but when you can you know put your request in and make it work for your you and your life for sure and then uh, honey let me talk to you about the drive home okay just to summarize it's just oh my gosh i used to work an hour away from home and i used to be driving in traffic get off at like 7 8 and i'm in traffic for an hour on the highway let me tell you i was fighting sleep like nobody's business for sure i would say if you can take a highway route take it avoid stop signs avoid red lights because that's when the sleep creeps in <laughs> like that's when you're like those are knob and it's like oh oh shoot and then or you hear you hear somebody honking at you to, to go so for sure if you could just take the highway route you know it's obviously take the quickest route home i would definitely recommend blast that ac get that ac like for me i'll blast the ac get that wind in my face or put the window down in the car so like the air is like waking you up and irritating you get that music up and blasting and you singing along don't just listen because you know when you hear something you hear stuff and you're not actively participating it's like wah, 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 and that white noise make you sleepy too so you can do that have somebody on the phone you know obviously not in a way that's distracting you gotta be safe while you're driving but you know i have you know my husband on speaker and we're talking you know he's like keeping me awake so that i can get home safely make sure that you get home safely but if you're too 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 tired take it I, I don't know how people do it but i can't because i'm so ready to go home take you know park on the side and sleep for a little while 15 minutes or whatever 30 minutes hopefully you don't sleep <laughs> and wake up at five o'clock and it's just time for you to come back but you know just for your safety because driving sleepy is the same as driving drunk so you don't want to get caught in a crazy situation after work because you are too tired so maybe park on the side of the road and kind of recover freshen up and just zip your way home okay it's it's crazy but to 
prevent anything like that, I would def definitely recommend you work as close to home as possible if you can. I know getting the first job is hard, but if you can get that job as close to home as possible, especially if you're working night shift. So um, I think that's for the most part in summary what I, um, that, and that's what I do to, and that's what I've been doing to survive night shift. It, it is challenging, like I said, um, I wouldn't, I want to tell you just be kind to yourself, be gentle on yourself. It's not easy. It takes time to adjust and adapt, but you can do it. Um, you know obviously it's not something that i would recommend for somebody to do forever some people do they're working like 20 years night shift i'm like i don't know how because then you know it messes with your hormones and then you know then you're like sleeping you become like the normal like a normally nocturnal person which is weird you know i want to re live a regular life at some point and it's so crazy because i'm like every day i go to work i'm like oh my gosh i'm so tired of nights i hate nights do this no more but then i still find myself still going back to work and you know working night shift there's just something about the atmosphere of night shift you know i love it it's a love hate so i think you too in the beginning you'll hate it but you'll learn to love it because it's just it's just a better it's just a better way of life at least for nursing the atmosphere is just way different than the day shifters i'm trying to see if i can switch over to days but <sighs> the workload, the environment, the people, management, all in your face. Honey, honey, honey. It's just, it's, <sighs> it's a work in progress. But if you can, don't do night shift forever. Get your experience at night and switch over to day so you can be regular and live a normal life. But if you're a night shifter forever, it's okay. Um, you, will you will adjust, you will adapt, and it'll get better eventually. It will be, it'll be normally abnormal for you. You will normally feel tired a lot. Um, maybe if you're feeling cranky, sometimes you get cranky and you're like grumpy on with others. If you're starting to act right way or somebody's like saying uh, you ain't acting right, you need some sleep. Go ahead and lay you in that bed and get you some sleep and you'll wake up brand new, okay? So I would definitely recommend sleep, sleep, sleep as much as possible. Eat healthy, be safe, take care of yourself. And that shit is awesome. You can do it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate you guys clicking on this video. Hopefully that this video had some content information that probably can help you, encourage you, and kind of lead you and guide you away into this night shift life. Um, if you, any experienced nurses out there, if you heard any different stories or you heard about any different techniques or ways that people have been surviving night shift, for sure, definitely leave it in the comments, share, let everyone know, let's share that knowledge. Maybe I can adapt this or change something in my um, routine that maybe helped me. Yeah, thank you for clicking this video. Hope to see you next time. Bye guys.